What's shaking and baking? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bite. It's all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now, iPhone rumors and reports are at an all-time high, so let's just jump into it. And we start off with the best look up to this point of what's believed to be the first iPhone 6 4.7-inch model assembled together from a collection of production parts, according to Russian site Feld and Volk. Now, there's a couple really nice looking shots here, and it brings back memories of the original iPhone design from 2007 with the rounded corners and pill shaped volume buttons, and it's expected to be significantly thinner at 7 millimeters. These are still unfinished parts, and based on your reactions from last week's show, some of you were really upset about the rumored protruding camera lens. Now, a recently posted schematic by Apple Club indicates that the camera lens will only protrude out. 0.77 millimeters, similar to the iPod Touch, and not as pronounced as we saw in last week's photo. I don't know why people are crying about this. By the time you slap a case on your phone, you won't even notice it, and we won't hear a peep from all those crybabies if it's a significantly better camera. Now, the new iPhone is expected to have completely revamped guts, and a post from Chinese Apple repair shop Geek Bar claims the iPhone 6 will be outfitted with a faster LTE modem from Qualcomm, offering speeds up to 150 megabits per second and support for LTE Advanced. Only a few phones in the US like the Galaxy S5 have this next-gen Category 6 LTE modem, and it has yet to roll out globally. Another report from Geek Bar claims NFC will be coming to the iPhone. This time, they showed off a wiring schematic where an NFC chip from NXP, the company, would fit onto the iPhone 6's board. So what looks like the most realistic possibility so far? A lightning cable that can go both ways. Now there's multiple images, including this one from Sonny Dixon, that have surfaced showing Apple's potentially new lightning cable with a reversible USB connector on the other end, making it easier to charge and sync your devices no matter which way you put it in. Apple even filed their own patent in January of 2014, but we may not see this yet even after all the leaked photos and videos because a California company named Ultratech already holds a patent for the reversible connector and they're selling them right now. Also, the iPhone 6's screen resolution is in question after many targeted the 960 by 1704 resolution as the sweet spot that would allow a smooth transition for developers to the new display. But after looking at an up-close picture of the iPhone 6's potential screen, and a discovery by 9to5Mac inside the latest Xcode 6 software development kit, a resolution of 828 by 1472 might also exist, and it's possible these could be the two resolutions for the 4.7-inch and the larger 5.5-inch screens, both still falling under Apple's Retina requirements. So after all these reports, the next iPhone might have a faster LTE modem, an NFC chip, a reversible lightning cable, a slightly protruding camera, and two screen resolutions. September 9th can't come soon enough, so uh, we can get the official word. And there's so much around the iPhone right now. Did you forget about the iWatch? Well, a new report from KGI Securities analyst Ming-Chi Kuo says Apple's iWatch launch could be delayed into 2015 because of the difficulties and challenges with manufacturing the all-new device. This is just his claim. Everything still points to an October announcement, but if there's enough momentum behind the new iPhones and the new iPads, Apple may not have to be in such a rush and you know they're only going to release it if it's ready to roll. Also, OS X Yosemite received its sixth developer preview release, and it also added a few new amazing wallpapers that really make you feel like you're at the National Park. Wow. There's also some new icons for hard drives, the font book, terminal, and more. The dashboard is now translucent. Ooh. And a new feature they're adding is the ability to do screen sharing over iMessage accounts. It previously required an AOL IM, Gmail, Jabber, or Yahoo account, and you can allow or block someone from seeing your screen, turn audio conversations on or off, and give them control of your screen. I will not let them do that. Now to the quick bites, the NFL Now channel has now been added to Apple TV just in time for the start of the season with instant in-game highlights, live events and press conferences, but no full live games. Make sure to check it out so you can watch all the various highlights of my 49ers stomping all over your team. That's right. Also, the creator of Flappy Bird, Dong Nguyen, says he's bringing the game back. But before he does, he has a new game called Swing Copter that's basically like Flappy Bird, but you tap horizontally, but it also looks even harder. The game is supposed to drop this week, so we'll tell you if it's just as frustrating as Flappy. And Apple execs, including Tim Cook, Phil Schiller, and yes, even Dr. Dre, took the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge and did a nice little slow-mo, and Dre even challenged Eminem, Kendrick Lamar, and Snoop Dogg to do it all to raise awareness for the ALS Association, 
and to fund research to end the disease commonly known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Now, this movement is more than a viral video that started as an idea from former Boston College baseball captain Pete Frades, who has ALS. So, I'm throwing out my challenge to you, the apple biters, to either donate or send in your own ice bucket challenge, and we'll get a few up on here next week. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Send me your email to theapplebite at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple. All right, Miss Shauna Mendiola, I accept your ALS ice bucket challenge. And before we do this, I just want to mention this is more than a viral video. This started as a campaign from Pete Frades from Boston College, their baseball captain. It's an amazing story, powerful story. So this goes out in honor of him as well as everyone else suffering from Luke Gehrig's disease. So uh, I want to, before we do this, challenge three people, the founding fathers of CNET TV. First, Molly Wood. Oh! Second, Brian Cooley. <laughs> that is cold. Third, Tom Merritt. Oh! All right, you guys have 24 hours to respond to the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. <laughs> Woo! All right, I'm done. <laughs>